Welcome everybody to EM All Access. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada at the Event Tech Conference, which is super exciting to me because a show for people that produce shows and are technologists is just, it's fantastic. Um, so we're seeing all kinds of great stuff here today and um, we're doing some interviews. And I'm gonna be joined this morning by Archie Lyons, who's Creative Director at Caterpillar. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to have you here. Now, Archie, you're speaking here at the conference about uh, some ways that you used demos in a really, uh, did some demos in a really interesting way. Um, let's talk about first, the problem that you have at Caterpillar uh, in getting people exposed to your product. Yeah, our construction mining equipment is quite large, so mm -hmm. it's hard to move around. Yeah. So the more we can get people in to actually see it, just as you would if you wanted to buy a new car. You mm -hmm. want to sit in the seat and feel what it's like, mm -hmm. and it's hard to do that with our product, so therefore we have demonstration areas we bring people to to actually be able to see and experience our product. So from there, we can say you have a, a process to do that, Correct. Um, but scaling it is where the issue Correct. comes in. Correct. At our demonstration centers around the world, you can only get about 40,000 people through a demonstration center a year. Uh -huh. This way, amplifying it with a video, we can actually now get, as we did with our Jenga video, over two million people to actually get to experience that demonstration. So, so obviously you're wanting people to experience the product. Now video, they're, not gonna, they're still not gonna experience it the same way. So what, what is it that you can do on video to help them see that product? It's really, most people drive down the street. You see a construction equipment inside the street. But with the video, we actually took a very fun, different angle. We wanted our company to come across as more fun and approachable mm -hmm. and more relevant. So therefore, um, having the construction equipment play the world's largest Jenga set was able to do that. That way people can identify with Jenga, yeah. you know what that's like, and then you now know what it's like to actually play it with a large piece of construction equipment. Describe that for us, in case people don't know what, maybe some people don't know what Jenga is, for one thing. Oh. Yeah. Jenga is, I mean, it's a children's game. Mm -hmm. It's a stack of wood blocks. You got three wood blocks on a layer, mm -hmm. and then as you pull a piece of wood block out, you put it on the top mm -hmm. to see how tall you can get the tower before it falls over. So we created our own wood blocks, but our wood blocks were about 600 pounds a piece. Okay, <laughs> well that's, that's a really interesting take. So we've gone from Caterpillar trucks and or construction equipment to Jenga blocks. So maybe that's the first uh, angle to make it sort of fun and interesting, is doing something visually interesting with the, with the, the demo. Correct, we found we need something that people can identify with. Yeah. They can identify with the Jenga blocks, so we use that. In another video, we actually identified with, most people have heard of the expression of bull in the china shop. Mm -hmm. We actually took one of our pieces of construction equipment and drove it through a china shop and let it work in there mm -hmm. so they could get an experience to see what it was like and how actually delicate and fine tuning our machines are. Most people think they're big and clunky. Mm -hmm. This is actually, it's very fine tuned movements that you could actually operate and actually pick a piece of crystal off a table and put it on a, st a stack of crystal without breaking anything. Oh, that's fantastic. So, so when you're thinking about creating these videos, um, what's the creative process like to come up with some of these ideas that you're using? Well, first off, we actually have a great partner. We actually partner with our marketing firm, which is Ogilvy & Mather mm -hmm. out of New York. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I will tell anyone that if you have a marketing partner, use them. That's what they do, mm -hmm. and that's what they're good at. So they help us create the ideas, and then we partner with our subject matter experts and our operators to then figure out what's the best way to connect those two things together. Hmm. And, and so you've created these videos. Let's talk about the scale of them. So you mentioned that 40,000 people could go through your demo centers a year. That actually sounds like a fair amount. A lot, of, a lot of people that are creating demos out there for a trade show, maybe it's a, a very small audience that sees it. And you always wonder about the return on that investment, whether it was, you know, did you get enough people to see it? So, right. so the way you're approaching it is through video. What, what does it scale to for you? It scales quite quite nicely, actually. Yeah. Our overall impressions for our three videos, while we had about four and a half million people see it on YouTube, mm -hmm. it's all of the other impressions through paid media, through earned media, mm -hmm. through um, social media, through mm -hmm. blogging and everything. We had over 700 million impressions with these, mm -hmm. which is significantly higher than 40,000 people see in the demo. Sure. And just through the earn, earned media alone, we valued that at about $60 million value we got back from those videos, which is a lot higher than what we paid for the actual video production. So what, um, when, you, when you're uh, this audience that's watching them, who are these people as opposed to, I'm sure you pick the people carefully that come see your demos live. So who are the people that are watching and how are they different from, from the, the others? A lot of the people who are watching are more of 
general population, if you will. So they're going to have the people who are could be our stakeholders, could be our shareholders, could be government people, but then also they're going to be people who maybe their parents work in the construction industry, and they are going to be the ones who are going to say, hey, mom, dad, come look at this video. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't use our equipment today, mm -hmm. but we want to inspire them to use it tomorrow or in the future. Mm -hmm. So that halo effect with young consumers would be a good, good place to start. Halo is critical yeah. because, as I said, beginning, as a 90-year-old iconic company, yeah. a lot of people see us as a little bit cold and corporate, which is not appealing to younger consumers. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to change that persona so people can see us more as human and relevant. And what, what about other parts of the world? The Caterpillar brand's really well known in the United States. Does this help you reach new geographies as well? Oh, 100%. The markets that we're targeting right now are all overseas. And most people are targeting the brick markets. Mm -hmm. So are we. Yeah. And this really helps us open those doors. They have access to the internet in those brick markets and it helps people see those markets and actually get to see our product. Where mm -hmm. maybe our product isn't actually on the ground right now mm -hmm. in a lot of those markets, but they can actually still see it and experience it. Yeah. And how do you measure the success of this program? How, how, what's your measure of ROI? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, for ROI, it really goes back to we're looking at how many impressions we're making. Um, at the brand level we're at, that's what we're looking at is what our impression is. Uh -huh. But then also through the earned media side that we're getting so much return back in earned media. I mean, from being on sites that we typically aren't on, Time, Mashable, um, even on TMZ, which our public affairs people were yeah. actually a little scared yeah. when we made TMZ, but it's a good thing. So it's just that good exposure we have out there, yeah. which is important at a brand level. Yeah, it's authentic. It's a great way to reach a new set of consumers. Right, and we actually made sure, speaking of the authentic part, uh -huh. is the videos actually have all have a behind the scenes component. Uh -huh. So people can see they're all real, there's no CGI, there's nothing fake. Everything you see is real, which is true to what our brand is. Cool, so would you ever go back? Stop doing these videos? I think we're always looking at new things. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say we're constantly going to do the videos, yeah. but we want to look at what's new. We're yeah. always looking at what's new on the horizon. Trying to innovate. Correct. Cool. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for joining me, Archie. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we're here at Event Tech in Las Vegas. And I want to thank Archie for sitting down with us uh, from Caterpillar. And we'll be back with another episode and another interview uh, very soon. Thank you very much.